Recapped here. Today I'm going to show you an American fiction fantasy film called In Time. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a future where time is money and the wealthy can live forever and people stop aging at the age of 25. However, they are engineered to live for only one more year and having the means to buy your way out of the situation is a shot at immortal youth. The rich earn decades at a time remaining at the age of 25 and this makes them essentially immortal. The rest of the society is left to beg, borrow or steal enough hours to make it through the day. Thieves steal time and the timekeepers control society. Will Salas is the protagonist of the movie. He is a 28-year-old Dayton factory worker who lives with his 50-year-old mother Rachel. One night he rescues a wealthy drunken man named Henry Hamilton from 75 Old Fortis and his Minutemen, a dangerous gang of thieves. Henry is grateful to Will and takes him to a secret location. Here they enter a discussion and he tells Will that he is 105 years old and is tired of living since there is no for the deaths in the unfair society. Hamilton, who has 116 years left on his clock, reveals to Will that the people of New Greenwich hoard most of the time and are constantly increasing prices to keep the poor people dying. The next morning, while Will is sleeping, Hamilton transfers all but five minutes of his time, then commits suicide by falling off a bridge before Will can stop him. The CCTV footage catches Will in the video, and the 75-year-old leader of a unit of police-like timekeepers erroneously assumes that Will robbed and killed Hamilton. Will visits his friend Borel, who warns him against having so much time in Dayton, and Will gives him 10 years, one for each year of their friendship, before going to meet his mother to leave for New Greenwich together. However, the city bus fare had risen from one hour to two hours, and Rachel having used up all but 90 minutes of her time to pay off a two-day loan is short on bus fare to return to Dayton. The young caring driver forces her to run back to Dayton and she arrives a few seconds too late for Will to save her and her time runs out in his hands. Heartbroken and angry, Will makes a vow to avenge his mother's death by taking everything the people of Greenwich had. In New Greenwich, Will meets 110-year-old time-loaning businessman Philip Weiss and his 27-year-old daughter Sylvia at a casino. While playing poker, Will nearly times out but eventually wins over a millennium in a flawless gamble. Sylvia invites him to a party and Will buys a new sports car and drives there. Raymond arrives and arrests Will who insists on his innocence in Hamilton's death. Rather than attempting to prove Will's guilt, he simply confiscates all but two hours of Will's time, explaining it does not belong in Dayton. Will escapes, taking Sylvia to Dayton as a hostage, but Fortis' gang ambushes them, taking most of their time and leaving them with 30 minutes each. Will attempts to get some time back from Borel, but his wife Greta tearfully explains that he has drunk himself to death. They manage to get a day each by selling Sylvia's earrings. Will calls Weiss to demand a thousand-year ransom to be paid into the time mission for the desperate. When Weiss refuses, Will releases Sylvia anyway. Raymond finds Will, but Sylvia shoots him in the arm. Will gives Raymond enough time to survive long enough for his squad to find him and steals his car. The movie carries on with Will and Sylvia overcoming obstacle after obstacle which keeps them from keeping their own time. Now committed to ending the system, Will and Sylvia rob Weiss's time banks, giving the extra time capsules to the needy, but soon realize that they cannot significantly change anything, as prices are simply raised faster to compensate for the extra time. Fortis' gang ambushes them, but Will manages to time out Fortis in a personal duel called a time fight, where each opponent tries to drain the time from one another. Will wins by taking advantage of his opponent's split-second loss of concentration as his clock near zero. Fortis looks at Will's clock when it only had a few seconds left and Will, using the same technique that his father used, drains Fortis of his time. Will then shoots all of Fortis's Minutemen dead. Together, the duo robs Sylvia's father of a million-year time capsule by breaking into his personal vault which they distribute to the poorest people, effectively allowing them to quit the jobs that they have been destined to which are owned by the elite who control the time they pay them with. Even though there is nothing the timekeepers can do about this release, Raymond Leon continues to pursue the pair. He chases them back to Dayton but fails to stop them from distributing the stolen time. Having neglected to download his day's salary, Raymond times out. Will and Sylvia nearly time out themselves but survive by taking Raymond's salary. In the end, Raymond runs out of time in pursuit of Will and Sylvia, and Will narrowly saves Sylvia's life with only one second remaining on her life clock. The poor begin to move into New Greenwich as we see Will and Sylvia have teamed up to rob time from the elite and give it to the poor in an effort to crash a system built by their greed. They steal time from the elite and give it to the poor. The ending implies that Will and Sylvia have become the Bonnie and Clyde of the new era, robbing banks and stealing from the rich to give time to the poor. 
much in the same way Raymond told Will that his father used to do. 